Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today, we will discuss genetic testing in clinical practice. Uh, the content of this presentation includes what is a genetic test, what are the common genetic tests and how do you choose a genetic test. Before I begin, I wanted to tell you we are not covering the genetic test for uh, infections like bacterial infections or viral infection, mainly we are concentrating about human genetic diseases. As we all know, cells contain nucleus where we have DNA, a small fraction of the DNA is present in the mitochondria as well beyond outside the nucleus and DNA is packed into each and every nucleated cell in the form of chromosomes. We have 46 chromosomes which are made up of again DNA which is made up of DNA and proteins and DNA as you all know is made up of double stranded uh, helix and which has different nucleotides like alphabets of our English language or the genetic codes of human uh, biological system. Defects can happen in term in uh, at the new uh, chromosomal level where we have abnormal chromosome number or chromosome structure or smaller fragments a very small sub microscopic alteration or within the single gene where several nucleotides or a stretches of stretches of uh, 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 nucleotides may be abnormal or it may be a single nucleotide change which we call po point mutation at the level of DNA. So, we will go through different tests which we do in clinical practice which can detect this kind of abnormalities which cause disease. You can refer to the other presentation in this series on mechanisms of the disease to understand different types of genetic abnormalities and their clinical manifestations. <coughs> just to summarize what I have just told now, chromosomes may be abnormal, we clinically call them aneuploid abnormal chromosome number, it can be a chromosome more or it can be chromosome less like we see more chromosomes in Down syndrome, trisomy 21, uh, trisomy 13, 18 and Klinefelter syndrome and a chromosome less can be seen in Turner syndrome. It can be a small structural abnormality of the chromosome uh, which involves one or two or several chromosomes which can be translocation or inversion, deletion or duplication of a segment of a chromosome. The next level is sub microscopic alterations again which is deletions or duplications or other complex rearrangements which are not seen under microscope when you see a karyotype. Single gene defects most common uh, defects are substitutions and rarely deletions and duplications account for mutations or pathogenic variations within a single gene. So, these are the co this is just a list of uh, genetic abnormalities that cause disease and now I will show you or I will tell you how we detect them in by genetic testing. Why do we before we begin why do we need a genetic test? Many times it is for diagnosis of a genetic disorder. So, uh, often they have been traditionally investigated by clinical evaluation or other tests and then we might have to narrow down a diagnosis for better management, better prognostication and explaining the natural history of the disease, genetic counseling which tells about uh, the risk of recurrence or recurrence uh, risk of occurrence and how to handle a situation where there is a genetic disease in the family. Sometimes uh, it is for prenatal diagnosis where couple are at risk of having a, uh, having a disease, genetic disease in the offspring uh, and pre in during pregnancy we can test them. Sometimes it may be extended family carrier testing or carrier testing in the population or even newborn screening. So, these are the applications of genetic testing like any other medical test we use in clinical practice. Needless to say 
evaluation of genetic diseases is like any other common medical condition which includes a thorough history taking uh, looking into the symptoms uh, uh, then uh, evaluating the family pedigree which is very crucial for evaluation of genetic diseases clinical examination radiographs imaging which can be ultrasonography magnetic resonance imaging or computer to, uh, tomography routine hematological investigations biochemical investigations or histopathological investigation i these are all important i do not want to highlight them in the current discussion but e, these have often they these are used for diagnosis of genetic disorders as well now the traditionally karyotype has been the mainstay of uh, evaluation of the genetic disorders or probably i would say it is one of the first genetic tests which was offered to genetic diseases which involves taking up taking cells which are live which can be uh, induced to divide or which are actively dividing arrest them in metaphase spread them onto a slide you can see here and then stain with traditionally it is stained with genes and banded with trypsin and you, uh, you analyzed using a computer and a microscope uh, which now we have several automated systems available but it requires human um, mind or brain behind the microscope and the computer to analyze this and then we show this is the you can see the metaphase on the left side where the chromosomes show different uh, bands light and dark bands and then they are arranged according to their banding pattern and the size from 1 to 22 and x and y. So, this is how we see we compare we count the chromosome number we compare the bands with the homologous chromosomes to see whether they are normal or abnormal whether there is an abnormality in the number or structure as you see here if you test on the left side you see trisomy 13 where there is one additional chromosome there are 47 chromosomes with one chromosome 13 being abno extra or additional uh, where the uh, individual has trisomy 13. In the second slide you can see trisomy 21 one of the most common conditions where we have one extra copy of chromosome 21. So, here we have detected structural chromosomal abnormalities using karyotyping or chromosomal analysis. It can also detect deletions uh, which or duplications or translocation which is very important where you see the size becoming small or large or we see bands from some other chromosomes coming to one chromosome and exchange with another chromosome which we call translocation a segment is exchanged between two chromosomes and then this also can be detected by karyotyping. Remember, traditional karyotyping has a resolution of about 4 mega base pairs which usually contain somewhere between 50 to 60 genes on an average. So, for a genetic defect to be detected it should be large by traditional karyotyping. What is beyond the resolution of the karyotype is something what we, what we call sub microscopic deletions or duplications which I will be discussing later. Traditionally indications for chromosome analysis was anything any individual with intellectual disability with or without malformation, but with chromosomal microarray being uh, taking uh, forefront we now have lesser and lesser indications for karyotype, but I would like to list here suspected aneuploidy when you suspect down syndrome, Turner syndrome, Klinefelter syndrome, trisomy 13 this is the investigation of choice. Suspect ambiguous genitalia where you want to know whether there is a y chromosome or how uh, whether there is a mosaic situation or a you want to determine the sex chromosome constitution of the individual you can do a karyotype short stature in a female or primary amenorrhea where you suspect sex chromosome abnormality in the form of Turner syndrome or mixed gonadal dysgenesis you can order a karyotype parents of children with structural chromosome abnormalities to detect whether it is an inherited or uh, a derived chromosome from parental balance translocation habitual abortion or infertility and as of now prenatal diagnosis is one of the common indications for uh, karyotyping, but soon it will be taken over by chromosomal microarray. It is not only important to know what uh, test we are ordering, but in the test order like karyotype what we need to look for. If the clinical diagnosis is Turner syndrome the most common in 50 percent of the individuals they have one chromosome less 
they have 45 x, but remember you need to see isochromosomes for x q, x p, ring chromosomes, mosaics. So, we need to count uh, as many cells as possible may be 100 cells to see whether somebody has a mosaic Turner syndrome. What we need to look for, what we need to look at is also important. So, it is important that we provide or we pro submit the clinical details so that the scientist or the laboratory person uh, look into the specific genetic defect that is causing the particular clinical condition. So, what need to be looked for should be indicated when you request a particular test. Now, we have situations where pregnant women come for detection of aneuploidy where traditional karyotyping from amniotic fluid or corneocular sampling takes 2 to 3 weeks. We have something called rapid aneuploid detection by fluorescence in situ hybridization or QF PCR. I am showing QF PCR pictures here. In the first picture you can see 13, 18, 21 x and y several markers across the chromosomes are tested in one go or one kit and then you can see here in the second picture you can see 3 peaks or 1 is to 2 or 2 is to 1 ratios of different peaks for chromosome 21 confirming trisomy 21 or down syndrome in the prenatal sample. This is one of the techniques which uses DNA instead of live actively dividing cells, but it has the ability to deliver the results in a day or two only for targeted chromosomal analysis. You want to analyze chromosome 21, 18, 13. So, then you can do this quickly using QFPCR. Fish or fluorescence in situ hybridization where we use specific probes against the target and then if there is hybridization because of the complementarity of the probe and the target DNA, we can detect them by using fluorophores or some colored material which is tagged to the probe and then we can detect here whether a particular locus or particular segment of the chromosome is present in two copies which is normal, three copies which is duplication and one copy which suggests deletion. This can be done for all the chromosomes or it can be done for selected chromosomes like trisomy 21 or it can be done for selected defects like 15 q deletion where we suspect Prader-Willi syndrome or Angelman, syndrome, Angelman syndrome. This is how fish or targeted segment of the chromosome can be analyzed using fish. Fish is little labor intensive. So, we have now better techniques equally rapid techniques, but fish was one of the tests which was used widely and even now it is used in several uh, laboratories to detect small segmental deletions and duplication and to count the chromosomes. <coughs> so, whenever we suspect a micro deletion syndrome like uh, Williams syndrome or uh, Prader-Willi syndrome, you can order a uh, probe for specific target and order a fish or you can count the chromosome or segment as I said in for aneuploidy, but remember it does not look at other sets. It is not a screening for all the chromosomes, it is usually screening for particular targeted mutation analysis. It is more specific than karyotype. If you suspect Williams syndrome, you can do this, but it in the same experiment it may not detect the other chromosomal abnormalities or other micro deletions or duplication. You can use interface cells unlike karyotype or you can use metaphase where you can re really see hybridization to the particular segment of the chromosome. Micro deletions or small chromosomal rearrangements can also be detected by MLPA. Here I have a, an example where multiple ligation probe dependent amplification is used to detect a set of uh, micro deletion syndromes which includes Prader-Willi syndrome, Engelmann syndrome, Williams syndrome. These are rapid DNA tests where the probes are spe specific to Williams syndrome, Dijor syndrome, uh, Prader-Willi syndrome, they are all combined in one kit and you can analyze 30 to 40 regions in one go and we as we see here heterozygous deletion of a segment can be seen in elastin gene confirming the diagnosis of Williams syndrome. I have touched upon karyotype which is uh, a test on a dividing actively dividing cell. Fish can be done on actively dividing cell as well as dead cell, MLPA can be done on uh, is done on DNA or dead cell. So, 
the mainstay of genetic testing is usually now testing the DNA where we take EDTA sample of blood, a drop or few milliliters are sufficient from any nucleated cell or tissue most easily accessible is saliva or blood sample. You can store if the transit time is longer or the testing is delayed often we need uh, parental samples to uh, interpret the results and for carrier testing always we need a patient or proband sample within the family unless it is a common carrier screening for the entire population and DNA can be stored forever. So, these are the advantages of the DNA testing. I will be discussing DNA tests in my subsequent present subsequent slides here now. One of the tests which are used uh, which, uh, which is done you, you widely using DNA is chromosomal microarray. Why this is one of the important tests which we use in evaluation of children with intellectual disability, I would put it simply that this is a very, very high resolution karyotype. The karyotype can detect 400, 550 or 800 bands, this can detect few thousand bands in a single experiment. We just see by hybridization technique whether the particular segment or the uh, region of the chromosome is present in one copy, two copy which is normal or three copy deletions, normal uh, diploid set and duplication across the probe spread across the chromosome by using probe spread from chromosome 1 to 22 x and y and it is almost equivalent to high resolution karyotype. But the difference is we use DNA not actively dividing cell. So, we can use the dead tissue for further analysis. This gives very nice resolution of the small segments of the chromosomes which is not detected by traditional karyotype. It can count the chromosome number, but what it cannot detect is balance rearrangement because we are just analyzing the dosage and not the uh, structure. It is not structural rearrangements cannot be detected. Chromosomal microarray or cytogenetic microarray is the most common test, most widely used test for uh, evaluating children with intellectual disability with or without malformations and growth abnormalities can be done on dead cells or DNA can detect small structural imbalances and but cannot detect balanced rearrangements. Most common tests use PCR, I am showing one PCR machine and how we keep the DNA and the tube into in one of the wells and then heat at different temperature and the, temp, uh, the it is cycled at across different temperature gradients and at the end of the PCR reaction we get multiple copies which are sufficient for analysis by something like electrophoresis where the DNA fragment migrates from uh, one electrode to the other uh, cathode to anode and then you can stain it with some staining agent like ethidium bromide and you can see the bands which can be photographed and analyzed further as we do for uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Duchenne muscular dystrophy children present with calf hypertrophy muscle weakness it is caused by mutation in dystrophy gene which is usually deletion or duplication and if a probe is amplified by using if a segment is or exon is amplified using PCR you can detect whether it is present or absent, but if it is duplicated we cannot detect by this PCR method and I will show you here se several exons are amplified in one reaction 3 to 4 exons from most of the common hotspots. What I need uh, what you need to remember is Duchenne uh, muscular dystrophy is usually caused by deletions of several exons of DMD gene rarely duplications and rarely point mutation. The most common pro, uh, deletions can be detected by something called Q, uh, multiplex PCR where we amplify different several segments in the region of two hotspots in the dystrophin uh, gene DMD gene and then we interpret whether the particular band is present or absent suggesting deletion of a particular region of the uh, DMD. DMD has 79 exons and using MLPA all the 79 exons can be amplified selectively and then you can see 
whether there is a deletion of a particular uh, exon or duplication which traditional PCR or multiplex PCR does not detect you this is a specialized technique where we can see uh, deletions as well as duplication across the DMD gene. But remember Duchenne muscular dystrophy can also be caused by point mutations which is not detected either by multiplex PCR or by multiple multiplex ligation dependent probe amplification it requires sequencing of the entire DMD gene. We have something like restriction fragment length polymorphism where a specific nucleotide chain can affect uh, digestion by a restriction enzyme which can be differentiated using uh, this kind of technique which we use for spinal muscular atrophy where deletion of exon 7 and difference between SMN1 and SMN2 genes are utilized to show different bands in the patient and we then we run controls and then we see whether the particular patient is individually is affected or not. The mainstay of DNA diagnosis or genetic testing is sequencing where this is a Sanger uh, sequencer and you can see the chromatogram you can read the alphabets A, T, G, C and see whether the particular color is changed or whether there are two peaks as we see here to suggest a DNA change in the patient sample. You can see here heterozygous variation giving two peaks, double peaks of half the height suggesting there is a heterozygous change. We can see here parents are heterozygous in the upper panel and proband or the fetus is homozygous suggesting the sequence variation. We now have something called next generation sequencing which uh, the most widely used test is whole genome sequence, whole exome sequencing followed by whole genome sequencing and panel testing for specific indications. I would uh, recommend uh, this article by Leslie Bisecker, how diagnostic clinical genome and exome sequencing can be done, what are the indications. This is tot entirely a dedicated section, but I would like to just show you exome is as we know 1 percent of the hardly 1 percent of the genome codes for uh, proteins, they can all be sequenced in one single reaction and then uh, different exons can be targeted, selected or captured and then amplified and analyzed against the normal variation, normal uh, human genome sequence or human exome sequence and variants can be filtered, but huge data can further be analyzed to see whether there are any sequence variations in exomes or the genes which code for proteins. This is how we align and show pick up variants which show abnormality this is becoming very widely used because entire genome, entire uh, exome can be sequenced in one single experiment very rapidly, very cost effectively and diseases can be diagnosed. Currently this is probably the uh, very popular test which is used for diagnosis of Mendelian genetic disorders which are caused by nucleotide variations within the single uh, genes. And when single gene candidates are eliminated, you have you have you do have several genes which need to be tested together, or point mutations or common mutations are uh, what I would say is recurrent mutations are already tested, and you have to sequence several genes like phenotypes to be known uh, known to be genetically heterogeneous, and multi gene panel testing is often expensive, and you do not have a proper clinical. Uh, narrow diagnosis, then this becomes a test of choice to screen several genes in one experiment. N we might have situations like here several fractures of bone, the weak bones where the clinical diagnosis osteogenesis is imperfecta, but then we have at least 15 to 20 genes which have to be tested. They are many times large genes, they cannot be tested by uh, one after the other because it is tedious, time consuming, cost ex, uh, expensive. So, all of them can be put in a gene panel and by using next generation sequencing you can amplify and analyze all the genes or you can go for an exome sequencing. So, this is a panel testing is currently recommended for genetically heterogeneous condition where a finite number of genes are known to cause a particular disease like osteogenesis imperfecta. We have diseases like uh, Huntington disease which require 
a specific type of testing because Huntington disease occurs because of triplet repeats and these repeats are very difficult to amplify by PCR and uh, this, these are not seen by karyotyping, these are not seen by chromosomal microarray, these are not detected by even whole uh, exome sequencing because these regions are not really amplified nicely with this. So, we have to use something like triplet primed PCR. You can see here patients show a different kind in upper panel a different kind of patterns as compared to the normal individuals who do not have this uh, repeat, uh, repeat expansion of this CAG triplet nucleotide. We also have I would like to mention here we have something like uh, methylation analysis for Prader-Willi syndrome or Engelmann syndrome or if it is facio humoral dystrophy you might have to do uh, southern blot or a methylation analysis or MLPA based test for fragile X mental retardation. So, actually if we speak so there are several genetic diseases which have unique patterns of genetic disease and we need specific tests. If I need if I can summarize the clinical utility of a genetic test sometimes it is very difficult to clinically say which, who has fragile X syndrome so, that is where we do clinically we can confirm the diagnosis. We can do carrier testing for hemophilia A or B by if there is a family member who wants to plan their family. It may be presymptomatic testing or predictive testing for Huntington disease, medullary carcinoma of uh, thyroid or population screening maybe newborns or uh, couple who want to plan pregnancy for cystic fibrosis, sickle cell disease or in our country even thalassemia. Prenatal diagnosis for chromosome analysis like Down syndrome or DNA analysis for thalassemia, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, spinal muscular atrophy, even in forensic for paternity testing, susceptibility testing for Alzheimer's disease and for appropriate genetic counseling we might need genetic tests. I would like to tell all genetic tests should be ordered with appropriate genetic counseling. Uh, it should be uh, timed well, test should be explained counseling should be done before the test is done and post test counseling may be necessary. Who should be involved in the decision making? We need to highlight uh, uh, whether it is a carrier testing, testing of asymptomatic children and who makes the decision, who takes the consent, why the particular test is needed, what is the, the meaning of a positive test or what is the implication, what is the implication of a negative test. Many times we see negative tests as reassuring, it is not true negative tests often indicates that we have not identified a cause. What is the implication for siblings, parents, relatives, lot of ethical and uh, legal issues and who is likely to know the result whether it is a spouse, parents and even when where insurance plays a role in uh, payment of the test we need to consider these things before ordering. In to summarize genetic testing is a very powerful tool in clinical practice, they are disease specific it is important to understand the genetic defect before we order the test. Interpretation is very critical and it has implications to the patient's family. Stored blood, preserved cells or tissues can be used. Uh, this is what I would like to highlight at the end of this session. Defects uh, can be abnormality of the chromosomal number, aneuploidy which can be detected by karyotype, a structural chromosomal abnormality, translocations require a karyotype, deletions, duplications can be picked up by chromosomal microarray, fish, MLPA or qPCR can be used for counting the chromosomes. If it is single gene disorders, targeted mutation analysis, submicroscopic sub uh, deletions or duplications are uh, picked up by chromosomal microarray better than any other test and for other substitutions, deletions, duplication it is usual by sequencing of a particular targeted region or the entire gene or whole exome or whole genome and rarely TPPCR, southern blot or PCR RFLP is used for gen testing genetic diseases. There is no single test for all the genetic diseases and sequencing and chromosome analysis are probably the most frequently used genetic test and type of genetic defect determines the test that we need to order for diagnosis of genetic diseases. Thank you.